Hi, I wanted to briefly talk about the scientific publication report that's due toward the end of the semester. Uh, in this report, your assignment is to first pick an original research article, something that presents new data, that has um, figures demonstrating that data, has a hypothesis that is being tested, um, often in the context of a scientific question, and then uh, discuss the background for the paper, the um, specific hypothesis being tested, discuss two experiments in the paper, and discuss how the, each experiment, first on its own, relates to the overall hypothesis, and then discuss how the two experiments together relate to the overall hypothesis. Additionally, you need to provo propose a follow-up experiment, something that would go beyond what they've already done to test an additional hypothesis that is related to the question or to use the similar tools, similar methods to what was used in the paper to test a different hypothesis, perhaps about a different disease or perhaps about a different aspect of the same disease. So um, the paper is approximately divided into three parts. There's an introduction in which you briefly introduce the disease, state the hypothesis, and then describe the previous work that you get from the introduction of the paper um, to uh, understand what led the authors to ask this question in the first place. From there, you will describe one of the experiments from the paper. Most papers have many, many experiments in them, and in fact, in order to have your paper approved, there needs to be at least two experiments in there, usually four or five, and then you're going to pick the ones that are most relevant. Um, and so from that, you should describe, first of all, one experiment, what was the specific question that is sort of a part of the larger hypothesis for the whole paper that was asked in that experiment, then the manipulated variables, what were they doing, what were they comparing, um, what were they measuring about uh, between those two groups, or between those three or four or however many groups, what results they got, so what was different. So just of the measurements, did they see something that was larger or smaller? Not any interpretation there, just what was the result. That is a very difficult part to um, do because you need to describe without showing the figures in written description enough about that research article and about that particular result that a reader, either another student in the class or me and the TA who will be grading this, um, will be able to, in a sense, imagine what the figure would look like from your description. Um, maybe not exactly how high the bars are or something, but see, you know, there's going to be two bars, one of which is a lot higher, um, or maybe um, over a period of time, some measurement goes up and up and up and up and up, um, and we should be able to approximately sketch out what the figure would look like just from your written description. After you've finished that, then you need to relate this back to the overall hypothesis of the paper and discuss the conclusions of that experiment. And then optionally, um, describe if there is another interpretation of those same results. Then you go back and do all of that again for the second experiment you've chosen. Then you go and um, relate both experiments together to the overall uh, hypothesis and question for the whole paper. So you've done each one individually, now you need to relate them overall. Then you need to propose a follow-up experiment that extends these results into a new domain. So maybe um, if they did something in mice, maybe you can think of something that you can do in humans. If they did something in mice, maybe you can think of something that you can do um, in terms of molecular interactions at a smaller scale. Or if there was in humans, maybe again, you can look at genetic manipulations, you can look at other things. There'll be a whole series of videos that I'm going to post soon along with this that will 
um, give you ideas for the different kinds of manipulations you might use, and we'll be discussing these throughout the course of the semester. So for your follow-up experiments, you need to propose a hypothesis. You need to explain your experimental methods. That means what are you manipulating and what are you measuring? Then again, you need to describe what you expect your results to be if your hypothesis is correct. Once again, this is difficult to do, and the um, expected results should be spelled out clearly enough in words that I or another student in the class or the TA could sketch out an approximate figure image of what these results would look like. Then you need to explain how, how you interpret these results and how and explicitly explain how those relate back to the hypothesis that you proposed for your new experiment. And then finally for the new experiment, you should describe um, what other results are possible and how you would interpret those results. And then actually after that, you should describe why your expected um, results and interpretation represents represent a an important advance. So sort of ending on a positive note, what is, if you find this, what does that tell us more broadly about what's going on? The length requirements for this um, are that it should be um, not more than 13 pages, uh, typically about 8 to 13 pages long. Um, Pro, you know, normal size fonts, one and a half, uh, uh, one and a half space, double space is fine. Um, you should there's sort of breakdowns for the different parts of the uh, of the paper um, listed in the assignment. In terms of deadline, you need to choose your paper before spring break, March fourth. Um, you need to have an outline on March eighteenth. A week later, you need to have a first draft that's uh, complete, and then a final draft is due about three weeks later on April seventeenth. All of these things are going to be submitted on Canvas, and I strongly recommend that you begin working early on all of this. 